So what we've got to do is get this live GUI USB image from Gen2. If you go to www.gen2.org forward slash downloads, you'll get this page here and you'll want to click on this link here. As you can see, the image is three gigabytes in size. Um, so I've just been downloading that this morning. It looks like it's finished. Yeah, that's done. Uh, rather than sit and wait for it. Um, one thing you might also want to do um, is to fetch the um, hash for that image to verify that the download is um, completed correctly, that it hasn't been corrupted or it's incomplete. And what you can do is to go to this link here. This isn't immediately obvious, but if you go to, sorry, all stages, and you'll get a file listing of um, a directory where there are other versions of various files that are need to, needed to build Gen 2. But if you go to this directory here, current live GUI AMD64, and click on this file here and download this file. This will have the um, SHA-256. Okay, that's interesting. How is it being updated? Let's refresh that. Oh, that's a shame. Um, normally that would have the SHA-256 file there. Um, I don't know why it's not available. Let's see if we can find it anywhere else on the internet. Uh, let's copy that. Right, looks like it's at this place here. Let's put that file name in. There it is there. So let's try and download it from there. Yes, it's coming down there. So I'll just save that to the same place where I've saved the um, the ISO file. Now, if I get up a command prompt, um, in fact, I think a PowerShell prompt might be the better idea. Yeah, Windows PowerShell. Uh, let's run that one. Okay, let's see if we can make this a bit bigger. So I want to change the downloads. And yeah, there's the, um, there's the, where is it there? There's the file I've just downloaded. That one there. Uh, so that's got the signature in, so if I show that, display its contents, this is the signature that we'll be verifying, that number there, and this is the ISO that I downloaded just before I started recording the video. And if I can find my notes, I've got to, yeah, to check it, we can type in get file hash, that command there, put a space and then put the name of this file afterwards. And you can see it's come up with the SHA-256 sum and it's come up differently, so that's not good. Let's just double check the times are the same. Yeah, the times are the same because I copied the file name. So I'm not quite sure what's happened here. Um, uh, I'm 
Yeah, I'm slightly worried with the fact that the file hasn't, the SHA-256 file hasn't downloaded. Um, so you can't really trust that the other one has been downloaded correctly or even that the ISO file is correct, what, what I've downloaded this morning. It might have been there's something wrong with it or it's been updated. Um, so if this happens to you, I suggest that you leave it maybe a few hours and come back and have another attempt um, before downloading uh, and verifying. Now, I've actually already written this USB uh, to save time. In fact, I think it's a couple of weeks old, the one I've got, so it's not going to stop me from doing anything um, on showing the video. But um, as that other um, checksum file hasn't matched, um, and the one on the Gen 2 server is not working for some reason, I would definitely wait for uh, either of those links to be updated, whether it's a, a newer ISO or the signature gets updated or even, even placed there on the server, um, especially if you're particularly concerned about uh, downloading the ISO correctly. Um, so I'm here in Windows, as you can see. Um, if you're in Linux, um, the command to write this would be using DD, um, which you can find out on other videos I've done on Linux from scratch. Um, on Windows, uh, use a tool called Rufus. If you go to rufus.ie, um, it'll put the, well, it's put the EN in for me. Um, I assume it'll change to a different location. It's got other locations here. Um, but yeah, just rufus.ie will work and you'll get this page here. And if you scroll down past the images, there's four downloads here and it's the second one that's probably the most useful. It's a portable version. It's just an EXE that runs by itself. You don't need to install it or anything. So um, if you didn't want to install anything or if you're not allowed to install programs on, on your version of Windows, then um, that's that's the easiest one to use. Another thing is we're going to be getting rid of this Windows and just going to be wiping the disk completely and um, just putting Linux from scratch on this uh, machine. So once you've downloaded that, you'll end up with um, this file here, Rufus 4.4p. And if you run that and do yes, uh, you'll get this window up here. And what you do then is you select the device that you want to write to. So if I plug in a USB, in fact, it's the one that's got the USB image already. Um, you see, I've just plugged it in and it's come up and it's recognized it straight away. Uh, then you click the type of image you want to write. So it is a disk or ISO image as it's already come up with. Click select, click the ISO that's been downloaded. Um, and then go down to, uh, is it, I can't remember which one of these it is now. Uh, is it under advanced? Where's the USB drives? Oh, right, it's this advanced format options, is it? No. Right, so that's the log. Um, Now somewhere here, there's an option to select how it gets written. And I can't see where it is now. Unless it's because there's already an image on it, it's behaving differently. Um, and I don't want to write to this USB either, so I don't want to start it writing. And be asking to. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not quite sure here, but there is a an option somewhere. And I'm not sure why it's coming up now. Let's try another USB. Um, where it gives you an option to write as in DD mode, DD, DD being the equivalent in Linux, and that is the option that you really want to use um, because if you don't use that option, you might have problems actually booting the USB. Um, I'm wondering if this comes up after you click start. It might be when you click start. Oh yes, this is it. Yeah, it is. So you want to select this option here. So basically, let's go through all that again. If I start Rufus up from scratch, it's recognized the USB I've just put in. Um, I need to select the ISO image that I want to write. So it's disk or ISO. Click select, pick the ISO that I've downloaded. Don't touch anything else click start and then you want to click the write in DD image mode and what that will do it will write an exact ISO if you do the write in ISO image mode it will um, attempt to alter the way the boot record is written I believe um, how the image boots um, as you can see it's, it's selected as an ISO hybrid image which means it can either boot from a um, a CD or a USB drive it's intelligent enough to know how to do that so you don't want to be altering it so just write it as it is in DD image mode and if I clicked OK it'll start to write that USB at that moment so I'll just click cancel um, wait for that to write and obviously that could take you know 10 minutes 20 minutes depending on how fast the USB device is and obviously how big the images that you've downloaded. The live GUI one, it's only three gigabytes, it shouldn't take more than you know five minutes or so I wouldn't have thought. So once that's finished you can just click close. It might ask you if you want to download some files and if it does um, I think this might only be if you don't choose the DD rescue mode. It it just um, creates this directory with these few extra files that it needs. Um, but I believe if you just use the DD mode, I don't think it's got any reason to download anything because, like I say, it just writes the image as it is, which is what you want. You don't want it tampered with or altered or anything. So that will give you the image. Um, and in theory, when you boot, you just need to make sure that you select the device you want to boot from. And obviously, it will be the USB device and that will allow the USB image to be booted and we can start building um, Linux from scratch from that point. So what I'm going to do now is to shut down these windows and reboot the machine. And boot into the Gen 2 live image.